Hello guys and welcome to episode 17 of my Total War 3 Kingdoms playthrough, playing as Sun Xian on very hard difficulty. In the last episode we managed to secure our borders after defending Poyang successfully with a really nice defensive battle, and we also relieved the siege of Zhang Yang with Sun Quan, and furthermore we managed to defeat another army of Teng Anhui with Sun Jian, and we actually killed Teng Anhui herself, so now Zheng Fei has taken over the faction for the time being. I would assume that there is the actual leader supposed to come of age, because I think Ten Anhui was initially a regent, so maybe Zhang Fei is as well for Lu Bu's child, or not Lu Bu, uh, Liu Bei's child. Anyway, uh, let's see what we have to do. I think everything was pretty much done, right? We've got 1,800 to spend. But there isn't really many places I actually want to spend it. I could definitely upgrade Shenyang since we've hit the population cap there. So let's put the money into that and we'll move on. It looks like that army moved away from Zhang Yang and destroyed the army of He Yi. Liu Bu would like a marriage. Offers an, a, a marriage between Dong Li and Sun Tzu. Probably not a good idea. It is your choice. Mainly because Sun Tzu will get a event that gives him a wife at some point. Or so I've heard. I'm hoping that's the case. Otherwise we'll just have to use one of our younger people to continue the line. Right, Zhang Fei has told the Han Empire to declare war on Lu Bu. Gon Sun Zan is now at war with the Yellow Tavern Rebellion. Uh, Zi Rong is now at war with Gong Du. And he declared war on the Han Empire and Zhang Fei. The finest armor. That's nice, we get another armor piece. What did we get? Hardened Iron Shell. So it's good armor, but um, it's not good otherwise. I don't know. I don't particularly like that piece of armor. Although one thing I do want to do is definitely check out my characters in this episode and sort out all of their followers and stuff, because I'm pretty sure we haven't completely optimized it. I have a couple of people in Merit I want to check as well. Uh, Linghu Yuankai and Zunbo. So Zunbo... He is 53, 52, sorry. Uh, competitive, artful, and elusive. Not the worst things ever. The independence as administrator, though, is kind of shitty. What about uh, Lingu Yuankai? He's patient, kind, and graceful. Actually, pretty nice traits, but he's 49. Just double check in the satisfaction of gunning. I need to appoint him as a general. I ASAP. Right, let's just go through my characters and sort out their followers and so on. So currently Sun Jian I think is pretty sorted. He's got the Ancient Silver Sword, which is, is his unique weapon, um, which has the Ancient Authority, which is good for the faction because it gives plus five satisfaction. He's got decent armor, he's got the Heavenly Fire Horse, which is nice. As for followers, we could change to like Artisan for the exper extra expertise, but the reason he has a Scholar is for the extra character experience faction-wide, which is really nice. The only other choice is like Trade Influence. Alright, let's go over to Sun Chuan. I don't think there's any extra horses, and he already has the optimal sword and armor. Currently got this guy for the wedge formation for his horses. Although we could give him an eavesdropper for when he becomes prime minister. Because that is the plan. What about accessories? Oh, he can actually have a bow. That's plus nine cunning. I'm happy with the water clock for now, but when he becomes Prime Minister, we'll definitely want to go for authority, I think. Unless we do that now in order to not forget, <laughs> I guess. 
would be the best way of putting it. Hmm. Anyway, Sinsa. He is currently pretty sorted. Like, the plus 10 melee evasion for own retinue is, like, really good. And he does have a decent mount. He is just really, really, really good right now. And the uh, stone horse is perfect. All right, next up, Cheng Pu. Cheng Pu can also use the bow, but doesn't benefit from cunning. The land shaper is perfect for him. And we don't have any extra horses. So Lu Su. We do have a military Jean here, but I'm not sure if that's better for him than the authority. I mean, it does more damage, but he doesn't benefit from the expertise. As for followers, plus four cunning is easily his best. And Book of the Mountains and Seas is absolutely fine. Right over to Huang Gai, who doesn't even have a follower. He currently has the Stone Archer. We could definitely switch that out for the Water Clock, I think. It's probably a nice idea. And we'll give him a follower that increases his expertise, I think would be the best one because all the others aren't really very useful for him. And currently his expertise is very low. So we can push that up to 30. Give him plus one melee evasion. <laughs> very nice. Um, let's see who's next. Guojia. Uh, he could definitely do with a follower. And I'll probably give him the merchant for the extra cunning. And the Jade Snake is decent for now, although we could give him the bow, which is plus 9 cunning. I actually see a character that the bow would fit better, and I think it's Zhu Yu. We'll just continue through the list. Huang Shi is next. He has the Martial G. And we could switch that out for the Military Shan. But I think I like the G better. As for the labor recruiter, we can probably switch this out for something that gives uh, expertise instead, like the builder here. Although he currently has this for the extra population growth. I think I'm just going to go for the builder instead, though. Uh, right, Zanyu Yin. We can actually give him the heirloom spear. That would give him expertise and instinct, although that might be better off on uh, Chao Rui, since he benefits from the instinct a lot more. I think I'm going to do that, actually. I'll go back to Zan Yu. Maybe he could use the hardened iron shell. Doesn't give him any more resolve than he already has. It actually reduces his expertise. But it does give him the extra armor, so that is something. I think it might actually be worth it. Just uh, giving him the extra armor for now. Uh, as for the followers, he currently has an overseer, which is extra cunning and authority, which is not something that's particularly great. The campaign map movement range and speed is nice for own retinue, but there are definitely other generals that could use that a lot better. So I'm tempted to switch that out. I think we might take it off him for now. Right, if we go over to Zhu Yu, Zhu Yu currently has the Devious Attendant, but we could give him the Overseer. I'd say the only good thing about the Overseer is the, the plus 5% campaign, campaign map movement range when commanding, and Sun Yu Yin is a commander. But let's just keep him with that for now instead. But for Zhu Yu, we currently have the Cunning, Satisfaction, and Reserves in Administered Commandery. I want to give him the bow. I think that's a really good shout. So we'll do that. Then we can give the nine chapters of Mathematical Art to someone else. 
like Gorgia or maybe Lusu. No, Lusu's already got that one. But that's fine. I think that's fine. And he's already got the best stuff. So we gave the weapon to Chao Rui. He can't get any better armor. But what we could do is give him the herdsman so that he gets the wedge formation for his cavalry. That's all good. Uh, Lady Wu. We can just give her the authority dude. Uh, this minus corruption faction wide would actually be pretty nice to give to Sun Chuan. Let's remove that from her. And instead we'll give her the clay dog. And we'll go to Sun Chuan. And we'll give Sun Chuan the discourses of the states. That when he's prime minister, we'll get minus 5% corruption. As for Jan Yu, we have pretty much sorted him out. Although he could use the military Jan. There we go, perfect. That's good for him. And we can also upgrade his armor. That's a big upgrade. What about this? Plus 10% income from industry is all good. And extra authority and satisfaction is fine. As for Murong Yang Yu, I'm not sure I'm going to kit her out because we're not using her. She was quite sim she's quite simply there to be like a wife for uh, Sun Tzu if we don't get the event. I think what we'll do is we'll wait till Sun Tzu is like maybe 30 and then if he hasn't got a wife by then we might marry him. Um, let's see. So yeah, we won't put anything towards her. But Gunning can probably use an upgrade. He has Gunning's armor, which is nice. And that gives him charge reflect. Does that mean like if he gets charged, he just like reflects the damage? That's pretty badass. Uh, he can't really use that follower. And we'll give him the clay ox for the uh, satisfaction. So that puts him up to 59 satisfaction, which is pretty nice. Okay, right, and that's that. That took a little while, but uh, I think it's definitely worth doing to make sure that we are optimal. Nothing much else to pay attention to, although actually saying that, uh, Lu Bu took Chang An. And we do have uh, military access, so we can probably just uh, continue round to Zhang Fei's lands. But if he's taken Chang An, and we don't want that ourselves, then I might just get like a non-aggression pact and stuff with Lu Bu. He does like us a lot. Glad to meet He's currently on plus 23. We the only reason he doesn't like us is because we are a strategic threat. We could invite Lu Bu to join the coalition. Coalition that defends the East. Propose the vote. Can I not, like, ask for money for this? Request payment. Do I have to do that first? Oh, I guess we just propose the vote. A and he will join. Nice. So we are in a coalition with Yuan Shu and Lu Bu. Which is very, very good indeed. We feel honored. We can transition our coalition to a military alliance if we wanted to. Well, that's all good. Happy with that. Now we can see all of their land as well. And we will go through and attack Zheng Fei. Uh, so let's go to March Dance and move towards this trade port. Would it be faster to go this way? I wonder. If we go into normal stance, it would be faster to go that way. 
Okay, well, we'll do that then. Uh, we'll march as close as we can so that we can attack it in the next turn, in theory. Oh shit, I didn't see that guy. Oops. I uh, didn't mean to do that then. I probably should have tried to kill him off. Uh, never mind. Uh, let's just get rid of all of these messages so we don't go through them again. And since uh, he is continuing south, he can actually take Nanhai. That's uh, awesome. Another commandery under our control. Actually, not quite because the trade port and livestock farm aren't occupied, but this is a free settlement for sure. And so, uh, certainly is conquering a lot of land. So we have a dock trading there, and we also have the jetties. The jetties produce fish, though, and we also have the farm here. So this is kind of pointless. I think we're going to get rid of that. Lovely. And what we'll do from there is probably just move on to uh, Kangwu now. Or maybe if this is occupied, we could go down there. Not sure. Uh, ancillaries gained. Warriors reinforced leather. Extra resolve and instinct. Resolve and instinct. Who would that be good for? Maybe our general here? Yeah, that would be very good for him. Nice. Let's go to... Zan Yu Yin, who is going to be taking the Poyang Weapon Craftsman. Occupy that. Thank you for colonizing it for me. We're going to have to spend 600 on actually upgrading it. Oh, having done that, we have revealed a lot of Sal Sal's land. I didn't realize he owned all of this. He's been busy colonizing. Wow. Okay, uh, well, we'll go and take that all off him. Sure, why not? Right, as for Sun Chuan, we do want to recruit Gan Ning into our force. And uh, we will want to attack Mi He. We could also declare war on Liu Bao and just take Nanyang. But for now, uh, what I'm going to do is just sit here and we are going to recruit ourselves some more units. We could grab some mercenary cavalry. Those mercenary cavalry have some sweet charge. 658. They got some really nice melee attack rate. Is that melee attack rate? I think it is, the 52 there. Oh no, it's their armor piercing damage is 52. Wow, that's a lot. I'm really tempted to actually buy some so I can try them out because I haven't seen them in battle yet. It's going to cost me a lot and they cost quite a bit in upkeep, but you get them instantly and they're fully replenished. So attacking Mihi is a definite opportunity here since we can run all over his ranged units. They don't have any significant cavalry. They've only got one Raider Cav. Uh, I think it'd be worth just taking the replenishment for like one more turn in Zhang Yang. And we'll repair the building while we're there as well, which will give us more income again. So that's nice. Also, Gan Ning should be quite happy with that. Making his satisfaction even higher, I hope. Well, maybe not. Anyway, uh, we do have this army that needs to move, but yeah, we decided we're going to leave them there. And that's it. Okay. Don't want to do any more diplomacy. Move on to the next turn. We offer peace. A regular payment of 781 per turn for peace. That's quite a lot. It is tempting, actually, because then we could focus on Yuan Shao quite easily. 
Although, actually, no, we can't take this. No, we can't take this. Because he is the Han Empire. He owns the Han this Empire. Yeah, so that's a no. Oh, that's really irritating that that army is just going to go straight past us. I'm going to have to bring some jam back to kill him. We are, however, friends now with Lu Bu. Which is great. The Yellow Turban Rebellion has been destroyed. All right, corrupt Governor. Your attendant reports that their investigation into local corruption has exposed profiteering all the way to the top. They suspect the administrator of the commandery to be a source of the current issues. They also recommend that rather than removing them, you perhaps whisper some words in their ears as to the fate of traitors. So we can decide, side with the administrator or with the attendant. So relationship deteriorates greatly to whoever we do this with. So who's currently in the court? I think Huang Shi is currently out on the field of battle, so I think we should probably side with the attendant. That's fine. Character ranks gained. Cheng Pu. Lovely. Let's sort him out. So. What is his retinue? He currently has a lot of sword guards and a couple of axe band. So he won't benefit really from precision. Although that is extra ranged armor piercing damage for the army, not just his forces, not his own retinue. I think bravery is nice though. His own retinue is immune to fear and terror and enables charge negate. Seems pretty decent. Another eight expertise as well. I really want to see him in a duel. That's all good. Alright, the city of Changsha has been upgraded. Nice. And we've got an extra slot there. So we have to decide what we want to build here. And I guess it's going to be the private workshops the extra income from commerce. Yep, sounds good. We have a reform available. We've got all of the minus corruption ones, haven't we? Oh, we can get to officer relocation as well. And we do want commissioners of passage the extra public order. Although public order is not really an issue anymore, but I definitely want the corruption reduction after that. So, seems like a good plan. And yeah, this public order is going to be sorting itself out now, which is nice. Right, down here, I am going to go for probably just the land development for now, for the base income. And we're going to have Sun Tzu start traveling towards uh, Kangwu. Unless it's better off for us to come over here, but I don't think this is owned by anyone. So we'll go into March and we'll march around the Kangwu. Oh, that is owned by the Han Empire. Maybe it would have been better to come across. We can still get down here pretty quick if we want to. It's much quicker than going through to Kangwu anyway. So that'll be the choice. Uh, general skill point available on Murong Yangyu. We go for stability. That counteract corruption is actually pretty nice. Uh, we could make her an assignment uh, similar to Jan Yu, and I think it would make us more than the plus 50% income from peasantry. 
So let's do stability for now. Nice. But we have our army here ready to go. Uh, let's go into normal stance and we could attack the trade port like we really could. Which may be a good idea because it looks like Zhang Yang might take that. If we don't. But then again, this army is going to come through and attack the Lumber Yard. Can they take any of these though? I don't think he can. Like one army can't take on eight units. I don't think. Especially considering it's mostly G Militia. So I think I'm going to go for the attack onto the trade port and take that. Right, there's a lot of forces here that are ranged. I'm going to set this to fight night battle and we'll jump on in. So this is a quite upgraded trade port, I think. It looks it. I could very easily uh, come in from this side, I think, is probably best bet. And that way we ignore a lot of the towers. So I'll just check the range there, that's fine. Have all of the archers in one group, as per usual. Crossbows in the second group. Sword and board units in the third group. I'm going to have my spear guards in a separate group in the fourth. And we'll put them into turtle formation. That's definitely the best for range block chance. And then we need uh, the G Militia back here. And let's bring all my generals over. Let's not forget about them. Okay, let's start the battle. And we will take down these towers. And once I've taken down these towers, uh, we will focus quite heavily on their archers. The towers are really important to take down because they chunk generals. As soon as the towers are gone... We can just have the generals go and kill like half of the guys in here. And the shells that are missing are currently going through the Saber Militia, that's fine. Come on trebuchets, hit the mark. You're ranked 10, you should be pretty accurate right now. They're proper failing. It's so annoying. I'm just going to speed it up and uh, we'll see if it eventually goes down. Hopefully it will. There we go. That one's that one. That one's gone. Let's just turn off fire at will as well so they don't waste shots in between. Okay. That one's gone as well. Nice. Alright, now we need to set to the flaming shot and we're going to fire at their ranged forces. That's really annoying. <laughs> it like hits everywhere except from the unit itself. I think the explosions are doing a bit of collateral damage. We just need some direct hits though. Oh, that's that's a direct hit. Oh, so is that. Perfect. All right, let's hit another unit. Uh, maybe the uh, Saber infantry back here would be a good shout. That way, if we miss, we'll hit the archers as well. Like that. Beautiful. Perfect. That's what I like to see. Ah! Right, we're out of ammunition, but we managed to utterly destroy them there. That is fine. That's some solid shots, actually. Are they just running away? <laughs> That's cool. Right, now we actually get to move in with our troops. So. 
Spear wall move forwards, thank you very much. Uh, then we bring in our archers. I do need to take down this tower though. Uh, let's have this slowed down a little bit. I need to move these further to the left. And same with these guys actually. So they aren't in line of sight of this tower. move up. Just going to allow these archers to annihilate these saber militia. And try and hold your shield up for that. As soon as we get into range of the towers, with my arch militia, I'm going to put some flaming shot on and just burn them down. Oh, we are going to be in range of uh, these archers, that's fine. Let's attack those. They're going to be gone in no time at all. That's the Archer Captain actually being destroyed as well. So that's fine. Let's uh, target the Saber Infantry there with those two units. This one can attack the Saber Infantry behind. I think the crossbows are currently chunking the Saber Militia in front. We're going to want to make sure that we don't waste too many arrows on units that are already running away. Because we do have plenty of archers that we still need to kill. But let's just stop these from firing. We'll turn off fire at will. And stop them from firing for now. Okay, this unit needs to move back. I need to move forwards the crossbows and have them target the archer militia units. It's very smart how the AI doesn't actually attack my spear guards. The 100% uh, range block chance means they couldn't do any damage anyway, but it's just interesting that they don't automatically attack. And let's just kill off this unit of Archer Militia with our own archers. That's perfectly good use of our ammunition. Alright, then the next two units behind will be focused specifically by my crossbows. Well, let's get this out of the way of the towers. We need to burn down this tower on the right hand side. Let's put flaming shots into that building. 11% fire damage. We didn't really hit it that much. We're getting there. 50%. Usually it's a lot quicker than that. Maybe it's because we are attacking them at like max range. Not sure. But once these towers are down, it gives us a lot more freedom to move. I'm going to move forwards these guys and attack the next tower as well. I'm going to move forwards these lines of infantry. Oh, 
I'm going to have the crossbows attack those archers. And as soon as that's set alight, you can change to normal shot and attack their archers as well. Like slowly moving forwards with these spear guard is awesome. They cover us so damn well. If that unit's running, we'll target the next one. That's 130 odd archers. That's all good. Right, let's bring up Sun Jen. I'll bring up all of my generals actually. This one does provide a debuff, so that's all good. And I'm going to have these ones start chunking the infantry here before we engage. And these crossbows are almost out of ammunition. Right, all that infantry is running. If we can hit those archer militia a bit more, then that'll be victory. And we'll have barely taken any damage whatsoever. Nice. Range force is OP. Lusu's retinue is just ridiculously strong right now. We lost 162. How much heroism is this going to give us? 53. Is that that must be the highest heroism we've got so far? Right, thank you for the trade port. This is a level 4 trade port worth 10 prestige. You can actually make it so that this trade port produces industry. I think for the most part you're probably better off just boosting commerce though. Especially like where we have trade ports. So for example in uh, Chengsha we have no uh, like industry buildings here so upgrading the coastal trading village so that it produces more industry is kind of pointless. Uh, where else do we have a trading port? I think there's one like over here somewhere maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of somewhere else. Oh well, that's fine. Uh, taking that trade port is very nice. And then it looks like Hedong, Hidong is uh, another town of Zhangfei that we can go and take from them. I'm probably going to do that. We'll probably go take that whilst we're there. Because I don't think this army is much of a threat as long as I have level 2 garrisons in most places, which I think I do. Like at least level 2 in most places for a reason. Just so those small armies can't do too much. At 2,500 cash is a reasonable amount. So we'll see if there's anything worth spending that cash on. And we could definitely upgrade this for the extra 100 income per turn. Because our income is not all that great. Since we've added another general to Sun Quan's army, it's not fantastic. I think I might go and attack Mihi though. This could be quite a simple battle. Do it. All right, we don't have a chance to do a night battle. We're just going to jump straight in. Well, it's a nice open field battle, so our cavalry will be able to get to work. I'll have my mercenary cav deal with their raider cav, I think. Let's have a look at these mercenary cav. Well, they're pretty cool actually. They do have like relatively decent armor compared to the standard cav, which don't have any. Well, they got a little bit. They got like a leather plate on the front of them. Okay, right. They've taken the high ground, I guess, uh, but I don't think that's going to help them too much. Especially the way that they've positioned on it. I can walk up and be level with them on top of that hill.
I'm not gonna worry about setting up my formation too much. Cool, that'll do. Make that a group. And we'll start moving up. Unless they're gonna come towards us. If they start coming towards us, that's fine. I'm quite happy to let them. Because they'll come off the hill, I think. Unless they're just moving up to the top of the hill. Looks like that may be the case instead. That's fine. Alright, let's go, go up and meet them. We're going to have to do a runner and uh, get my cavalry to start moving around the flanks. I'm also going to give my archers targets. I need to kill those crossbowmen ASAP, so we'll make them a target for sure. I don't know if we want to duel with anyone. But Gan Ning should probably be pretty decent in a duel. If there is somebody we can duel. Right, I want to charge into their Raider Cav. With my mercenary cab. Definitely something that I want to do. Nice, we did a lot of damage there. I realize I don't even have like loose formation, which is quite funny. Right, let's uh, break off here. I'm going to charge their vanguard. Their vanguard leader. So we can do a lot of damage to him with Cav. He's almost dead already, which is great. Let's get into the melee with our leaders. And I need to have these guys get around the back. Uh, these guys, we're going to break them off. We're going to charge into the repeating crossbows. We're going to have these guys come up. They're going to charge into the back of the arch on the hill. Oh, we can target a unit specifically. Okay, I didn't realize that was how that worked. Oh, does it only work on an enemy general? I think it does. That's fine. Let's have the mercenary cav come up here and attack the arch militia. Right, we killed their general. Just charge straight into the Sabre militia. And I'm going to have my archers now target the big blobs of enemies. Oh, big old charge coming in. Since these don't have, like, any spears, they just got wrecked. That's fine. You can just pull away from that and do a shift attack back. Let's have this unit just charge into the back of their infantry line. Perfect. We'll move out. Charge back in. Same deal on this side. We'll move the mercenary cavalry out. We'll charge back in. Doing a lot of damage with those cav. Uh, let's move these out. Off the way as the other units come in. And that should delete that Saber Militia unit. Wow. So I could just break these off and go run down the repeating crossbows. That's definitely an idea. Let's break off again. And charge back to the G militia. Okay, 
have these guys run away and then come back into the Saber Militia there. We can give a melee evasion buff. I didn't realize that was a thing. Okay. None of them want a duel. It looks like we're just stuck doing what we're doing. I'm going to swap around these units. I'm going to have the cavalry go and attack their cavalry. The uh, mounted lance militia will have my saber militia come down and kill off this, their saber militia. I think that's victory, actually. Looks like victory. Yep, we got him. And Chuan wins his first battle. I will want to run down as many units as I can. Especially if there's not... Or if there's too many men left. Yeah, it looks like we should be able to just delete this army. Which would be perfect. No more threat towards Zhang Yang. These guys trying to get away. Mercenary Cav cleaning them up. And that's a close victory, apparently. I didn't think that was close at all. Maybe our infantry line took a bit of a beating because we fought uphill, but otherwise, I think that was okay. One of my Cav units got over 400 kills. 416 kills for the Saber Cav. 670 kills for the Mercenary Cav. Wow. Tufa Yushu. She is selfless, perceptive, and concerned. She's actually pretty nice. She can get Defenders of Hebe and Heavy Crossbowmen. We could kill her and take the Tunic of Divination. She's not bad though. And I think I'm still going to kill her. Pretty old. So, at least she won't die of old age, which would be quite horrible. Especially in these times. And I guess I'll take the replenishment from that. Thank you very much. Very, very nice. And unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll level up Chengpu or Hangxi and Sun Chuan. And I'll assign this genetic of divination. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.